I was calling uh, home from work from a night shift, and I guess I fell asleep on the steering wheel and just rolled off the road, and my car uh, flipped and caught on fire. I was in a coma for like three and a half months, and then like a, an extra month just waking up and like trying to like exercise a little bit, and then to rehab for two more months. I have a colleague who works in New Jersey. He's a plastic surgeon, and he called me to let me know about a patient that he had been taking care of for numerous months. And he also talked about the struggles uh, that he was dealing with. He had had numerous operations, probably over 20, of his face and his hands, and they began to entertain the possibility of a face transplant or hand transplant. And I think the main issues were that he was essentially a functional cripple. He was completely dependent on care from his parents. And this was a young, motivated person that really was independent until this particular time. And they did not feel that there was end in sight. Now, he's an excellent candidate, but that does not mean it's going to be easy to find a donor for him. When we look at Joe's PRA, which stands for Panel Reactive Antibody, his PRA was 94%. He essentially had a 6% chance of identifying someone that would be a proper donor for him. That is very difficult to find. We're basically looking for a needle in a haystack. This is Joe to my right. He's the patient that we're going to be listing. He sustained about 80% total body surface area burns. Most people with that amount of burns, they don't survive. And that um, has severely compromised his life. We're fortunate that at our institution, we have a simulation lab where we can actually begin to exercise the real operation before we actually translate that into the operating room to begin working with our operative personnel. So we began with our core surgical teams in the simulation lab to kind of iron out all the kinks. Then we would move into the operating room and begin that exercise with all our personnel. The combination of our simulation lab and tissue lab and state-of-the-art operating rooms at Kimmel Pavilion really gave us the working platform to ensure the success of this highly skilled team. Commonly when we perform these operations and we're about to take on a major task, we have an opportunity to visit the community and what we felt today was very positive energy. And something that's very important for us to be successful. Now, this will be my fourth transplant, and Joe is a challenging case. There have only been two attempts in the world to do a face and bilateral hand transplants, and they have been unsuccessful. So they know what they're getting into. Here he's really shaping up into yeah. the picture that we start seeing yeah. in high school, right? I think I was Maybe uh, seventh grade. And as the years go by, it gets harder to get a picture of. Yeah. You don't like the pictures, Joe? No. Why not? They don't know my angles to take it. Oh. It's got angles. Really? Yeah. When was this? What month? June. Uh, yeah, June. This is right before it went down, right? Mm -hmm. Although we were going through this and we had to refocus our energies on saving people's lives that were in suffering from this horrific pandemic, in the back of our mind we had not stopped looking for a donor. It's been a great privilege for me to be in this great adventure. For these gifts to happen to Joe, unfortunately someone has to pass. 
but we've been very fortunate to have a remarkable match. What I told my team is exactly what I felt. We've rehearsed for this operation, we're ready. We all know what we need to do and we will be successful. The time is precisely 6.55. We're gonna go ahead and do a timeout. He's scheduled for a face, a lot of arm and multi-organ recovery. We completed the operation at 23 hours and we got Joe up to the surgical intensive care unit. So Joe, you know what we're doing today? We're going to kind of liberate you so we can uh, let you look in the mirror. You have a big smile. See how see everything's starting to move? Isn't that great? Open your mouth real wide. Good. Close your teeth. Open your eyes real wide. I was so impressed when I saw him for the first time grab the five pound dumbbells and grab them independently. And it really requires a pretty significant grip when you've had new hands to hold on five pounds and he wants to do more weight. Our physical therapy team and our hand therapy team is getting very creative with having them do fine motor skills. The progress so far is actually really going ahead of schedule. Uh, you know, just my, my motivation to get things done is really, uh, really high up there. Uh, so as far as I feel the most is it's my hands. I really want the hands first. Well, my first met doctor, I guess. I said, well, I get the hands done so I can get back to work. To Joe, this operation basically translates to independence and freedom. He's kind of breaking out of that shell that every person goes through when they're compromised. And he sees this kind of light at the end of the tunnel that he's going to be able to recapture and regain everything that he had prior to his injury.